Hi guys, and welcome back to another video and an update on our high mileage E92 M3. The last video we changed the dampers and I made a little bit of difference to the way the car was driving, but it's still quite bad compared to our Japan Red E92 M3. The first thing we're going to do is address the front end suspension because the steering is very vague. It doesn't feel like the front wheels are doing what I want them to do. I mean, the back is pretty loose, but I want to do it in stages to see what kind of improvement we're going to make. So let's go and see Aston, and he's going to talk us through what he's changing today on the front end. All right, Aston. Certainly, mate. How's it going? Yeah, good. So what are we doing today? So we're going to change all the lower arms on the front end of the car. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do um, all of the lower arms, the, both drop links and the tie rods and the track rod ends as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we basically went for TRW parts. So they would be making the OEM parts? They would, yeah. Yep. So what we've done was we got as much as we could in TRW, which is obviously these arms, the inner rods, and this lower arm as well. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't find this lower arm in stock anywhere when we purchased it all. Yep. So we got this one from BMW. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see when you look at the two arms, they're both labelled with TRW, but they've, but they've, they've shaved off the BMW. The BMW, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Um, and that's basically because TRW aren't allowed to sell them with a BMW logo on. Logo on it. Yeah. But TRW make them for BMW to sell. Sure. So um, yeah, we basically did that just to keep the cost down a little bit because not everyone wants to buy straight from BMW. Yep. So we went with the TRW products. Again, these have got them shaved off as well. Yeah. That's where the BMW would be. Um, so yeah, quick kept the cost down a bit. The drop links we couldn't get from anywhere other than BMW at the time, so mm. we did that. The same with the D bushes, and then we've got new bolts, new bolts, nuts, and uh, fixings to connect it all to the car. Okay, so you had the alignment checked out. Yeah, we checked the alignment over at Dream sure Automotive. Okay. Yep. Um, the alignment was pretty good. Mm -hmm. The toe was slightly out, which wasn't really too much to worry about. Mm -hmm. But the front left had a bit of a uh, negative camber. It was mm -hmm. quite quite far in. Okay. Um, that could be down to a worn bush or a bent arm slightly or yep. a damaged arm, something like that. But we're not entirely sure until we change them whether that's going to make a difference or not. Okay. So we're hoping we change all these and get the alignment done at Dream again. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we'll have to do the toe because we've changed the arms, um, changed the tie rods and the track rod ends. So we're hoping that maybe it was a bent arm or a slightly worn bush which has caused that camber issue. Okay. Um, if these fix that issue, then we, we know we're okay. If the camber is still out, then we have to start looking at like the body or the wheel or um, the shock itself. Okay, so when we were under the car, when we were initially expected, there was a lot of play, wasn't there? There was, yeah. That's yeah. one of the main reasons why we're looking at changing these arms, because all the bushes here that are on the inner that fit to the mm -hmm. subframe, there was quite a bit of play on those bushes. Okay. So that is one reason why we're concerned that that's what's causing a bit of the play in the state. Which is to be expected on a car that's on a car, got this much mileage. Yeah. Yeah, um, generally, unless an arm completely fails or it gets mm -hmm. damaged or it bends or something like that, people don't tend to change them unless mm -hmm. it comes up as like an MOT failure. Sure. Um, so unless this has had like a warm bush as an MOT failure, I wouldn't have thought they've even looked to change them. Okay. Um, so yeah, hopefully But that just goes to show you the difference it. between an MOT failure and the actual car performing actual car to what form. it should be. Yeah. The, yeah. Obviously the MOT specifics are very different to how the car feels. Yep. So you could have like um, right on their border of what the MOT passes, mm -hmm. but the way it feels in the car is completely off. Sure. Okay, so let's get this all on the car and I'm looking forward to seeing yep. what kind of difference it makes. See if it helps. Cool. So I've removed the lower arms and the tie rod from the passenger side of the car. 
And we had people asking us before if we could show a comparison between the new arms and the old arms in like terms of wear on the bushes and the ball joints. So we thought while we've got them off, we'll compare the two and give you a run through. Um, so if we look at like this lower arm, for instance, you've got the spherical bush at the back, which is really tight to move. In fact, I can't move it at all. And the ball joint itself is again, quite tight. Obviously these are brand new, so they're going to be solid. But if you compare it to the old one, there's quite a lot of movement in the ball joint and there's quite a lot of movement in the, spher uh, in the spherical bush as well. Uh, this lower arm in particular didn't have a lot of play in this bush um, while it's off the car, it's quite difficult to move, but the ball joint itself has got a lot of play compared to the new one, which again is really tight. And then the tie rod and the track rod end as well, uh, specifically the end here is loose and then the new one is obviously quite tight so we're hoping this comparison is going to show a difference when we're driving the car and you can see a difference in how the car handles but once we fit the arms to the car I'm going to run through again and just give you a comparison of both sides so you can see what they're like once they're fitted to the car so we'll get these fitted and then we'll show you that afterwards So I've fitted the arms to this side now. All I've got left to do is to torque up all the bolts. Um, but as I said, I'll give you a quick comparison between the old arms and the new arms. On our initial impressions of the car when we looked, we noticed the most play was in this arm here. So if you take a look at the difference between this arm and the new one, you can see with like very little effort, there's a lot of play in that arm, which was showing on the, on the bench as well. And on the new one, it's pretty much non-existent without a lot of force. So that's the difference between the two arms, the new one and the old one. So now I'm going to get this side stripped out and change them over for the new ones. Ryan Little. <laughs> Thank you.
So with all the suspension components changed, we've brought the car back over to Dream Automotive to do the alignment. So we'll check the alignment and make any adjustments that are required. This is a necessity when you do make suspension component changes because it can throw the alignment out, especially if you're changing tie rods and tie rod ends. So we'll get the adjustments made and give it back to Imran and he can take it out for a drive, see what he thinks. So with the adjustments completed, we can take a look at the screen and the results. As we knew the rear was okay anyway, because we checked it before. The only issue we had was obviously that rear camber where we've got a seized bush. But we will address that issue once we change components on the rear axle. So we're not too worried about that right now. But if we look at the main focus of today, which was changing the lower arms on the front, it has made a significant change. Now, we, obviously we changed the tie rods and the outer, uh, the tie rod ends. So we had to adjust the, um, the toe anyway, but the, camber is what we were mainly concerned of because there's no adjustment on the camber from standard. So we were hoping that changing those lower arms would, um, would bring that camber back into the green, which it has. So we couldn't see any obvious damage on the lower arms from before, but there may have been like a slight damage in one of the lower arms or maybe somewhere in one of the bushes, which is what's caused the camber to be out. Either way, that's now been cured by changing it to the new ones. So my job is now done. We'll get him around back in the driver's seat and he can see how he feels on the road. Now Aston has fitted the new front suspension components. Let's go for a drive and see what it feels like. And immediately I can tell a huge difference. Before the steering was very, very heavy and had a huge amount of play in it. Now it steers like an E92 M3 should do. It's not vague on the front end and it's not really heavy. So this does feel like an E92 M3 should do and is on par with our red car if not even a little bit tighter now on the front end so I'm really happy about that it's made an absolutely huge difference whereas before when I was coming around these corners it was really hard to place the front end and have confidence in it I've gained that back now obviously the rear end still a little bit loose but we will be addressing that shortly but we wanted to do it in stages to see how everything was making a difference and I wasn't really enjoying the drive of this before at all, but now with that fixed, it's made a massive difference. The rear end I can still feel has a lot of play in it. I can especially tell when I'm coming out of corners, when I put my foot down, it doesn't have as much traction. So you can just feel the back end just moving around a lot. And especially when you're going over undulating roads like this at a slightly higher speed it just feels very floaty but with the next step of this car I'm hoping that we can address that so it's made a big difference and I really like it let's go back to the workshop see how much we spent and see if it was good value for money So you know my feedback on what we've done to the car, but is it worth it? Let's take a look at how much we've spent so far. From our last video, we were at £18,360, including the cost of the car, £640 for the front end suspension parts that we put on, four hours labor. That's obviously gonna depend on whether you're doing the work yourself or your shop's hourly labor rate, and £100 for alignment. Again, that does depend on where you go. Some shops will be less, some shops will be considerably more depending on what they're actually doing. So we're currently at £19,500 and we spent around £1,100 on this change. Do I think it's worth it? Yes, 100%. Because this car did not feel like an E92 M3 before. It actually felt quite bad to drive and this has made it feel much more like the car it should be. So our next stage was to actually do the rear arms to see what difference that makes. The eagle-eyed among you will see that we've actually had a puncture now. So before we do that, we'll get a new tire. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please remember to smash that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. If you want to join the conversation, please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you. If you want to watch more of this project, you can do so over here. If you want to watch what YouTube thinks you might like from our other content, you can do so over here.